Welcome to What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Got a great message for you today coming from Brother Ricky Phillips. The title of his message is How to Feed 5,000. He's going to be preaching to us out of John 6, verses 5 through 7. Then we're going to have a song from Junior and Donna Dalton singing Master of the Sea. If you haven't already subscribed, go ahead and subscribe. Click the bell, turn your notifications on YouTube. Follow, like, and share us on Facebook. And check us out on Instagram for some inspirational posts. Now let this video be a blessing to you today. Hey man, what a joy it is to be with you here today on What the World Needs is Jesus broadcast. Man, I tell you what, excited to be here, excited to be getting to preach another message, amen. Get to talk to somebody about Jesus Christ, amen, the one that can save your soul from an awful place called hell, amen, the only one that can save your soul from that awful place, amen. I hear on TV all the time, I hear, hear people say, well, there's, there's many ways to heaven. And I'm here today to tell you that there's not but one way to heaven, there's not but one way to the Father, amen, and that's through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man coming to, you know who no man is? He's talking about no human, uh, when he says no man there, he's talking about the human race, amen? No man can come unto the Father but by me, amen? I tell you what, so that tells me we got to know Jesus Christ today. We have to have a, we have to have a relationship with Jesus Christ, know Jesus Christ, amen? He told, told Nicodemus, he said, you must be born again, to see the kingdom of heaven, amen. You must be born again, glory to God. And I tell you what, if you're not, today is your day, amen. This is a special time for you. If you're not born again, I want you to uh, ask Jesus into your heart, ask him into your life, amen. And watch your life start to change, glory to God. And I'm telling you what, it'll change for the better. It'll change for the better, amen. Uh, 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 you, you, you probably still not gonna get brand new cars and houses and boats and all this stuff. But it'll change for the better, I guarantee you, amen. It'll change so that whenever stuff happens to you, you got somebody to call on, amen. Whenever nobody else in the world loves you, amen, you got somebody to call on that will love you, amen. amen. He does love you. Not, not only will, he does love you, amen. He already loves you today, amen. Glory be to God. That's right, unconditional love, amen. How many of us has an unconditional love for somebody? Listen, we all, we all, uh, uh, we love, we love our loved ones and stuff until they start doing us wrong and then we're ready to throw them out. We're ready to get rid of them. Put them out. Glory to God, they done us wrong. I'm mad, so uh, we're ready to get rid of them. But listen, Jesus ain't like that, amen? amen? Jesus ain't like that. And God is a long-suffering God, amen? You know what that means? That means whenever we don't do right and whenever we don't uh, live right, he still loves us. He's not going to kick us to the curb. He's not going to throw us under the bus with both wheels run over us. He still loves us, amen. He still loves you today, amen, and he wants you to be saved. He wants you to be born again, amen. The Bible says that God would that no man, just, just paraphrasing, no man would be lost and died and go to that awful place called hell. So if you're not a born-again Christian today, it's my heart's desire right here at What the World Needs is Jesus that you find him some way, somehow, somewhere. Hey, man, you get on your knees. If you can't get on your knees, you just bow your heart down to God. Bow your heart down and talk to Jesus just like he's standing right there in front of you because if you're talking to him, he is standing right there. Amen? He's standing right there listening. Glory be to God. I tell you what, nothing like Jesus Christ in the whole world. Nothing like him, amen. No other man was like him. No other man will be like him, amen. amen. No other man will walk this earth like Jesus Christ did. You know, we're supposed to strive to be like, because we can't be like Jesus. We can't walk on this earth without sin. We was born into sin, but Jesus Christ, now listen to me, Jesus Christ, amen, walked this earth without sin, period. He had no sin in his life, and he felt everything me and you felt, Phil, and he, he done everything. He come across everything that me and you come across, and he still didn't sin, amen. What a wonderful person he was. And then at the end there, he gave his life. He gave his life. It wasn't really the end. It was really the beginning. 
Amen. It was just the beginning of eternal life for us, for me and you. Amen. Because we're going to live eternally somewhere. We're going to live eternally somewhere. And it's going to be one of two places. Man, I tell you what, I, I'm going to make sure today, I'm going to make sure, sister, that I got my eternal home. I'm going to make sure that it's in heaven, glory to God, and not the other way. Amen. I'm going to make sure today that I got Jesus on my side. Amen. And I've got Jesus in my heart, and there's no other way around it, no other way to look at it, no other way to see it. Amen. Uh, except that I've got Jesus in my heart. I'm a born again child of the living King. Are you born again today? Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you what, I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't wait another minute, wouldn't wait another second. If I wasn't born again, if, if, if I say, are you born again, and you have to think about it for a second, listen, I'd go ahead and ask again. If you think you are and you don't know, what's the harm in asking again? Ask Jesus into your heart again. Listen, I want to make sure that I know, 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 that I'm a born again child of the living King. On my way to heaven, glory to God. Are you on your way to heaven? Amen. Glory be to God. I tell you what, nothing like this in the world. Nothing like living for Jesus Christ. I tell you what, what a wonderful life we have. Amen. Somebody we can trust and count on. Amen. When we can't count on nobody else, we can count on Jesus. We can count on Jesus Christ. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, got a good message here today. If you got your Bibles, and I know you do, just go on and get them if you ain't got them. We're going to be in John chapter 6. And we're going to start in verse 5. And the Bible says, When Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company coming to him, he saith unto Philip, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. Amen. That's where we're at today, right here in these scriptures. When shall we buy bread that these may eat? Jesus was asking him this. Jesus already knew the answer. Jesus already knew what he was going to do. Amen. He already knows what's going to happen uh, uh, in the future. Amen. We don't know about things that we don't know about, he already knows about, amen, and when we pray for stuff, and whenever we try to get stuff uh, took care of, and we, we think God's not answering our prayers, you know what he's doing? He's looking up here in the future, and he's saying, well, I got to get this one worked around here to do this, to take care of this, and this one worked around to do this, to take care of this, so that in this day, that this will happen, and this, and my children can be safe and sound, amen, that's exactly what he's doing. Amen. He said, I already know what the answer is. He said, I already know. But he asked, he asked him anyway, when shall we buy bread that these may eat? Philip answered to him, 200 pennies worth of bread is not sufficient for them that every one of them may take a little. One of the disciples, Andrew and Peter's, uh, bro, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, there's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fish. Now, they're, they're looking at 5,000 people. Hey, man, uh, uh, up there in verse 2, it tells us a great multitude followed him because they saw his miracles, which he, had, uh, which he did on them, that were diseased. So there was a whole multitude of people that had followed him, hey, man, because they seen what he'd done to the, dis the diseased. He healed them, amen. He healed whatever was wrong with them. And, that, and, and it ain't stopped today. He's still in the healing business, amen. Whenever you need something from God, don't you hesitate. You call on him and ask him, amen. You don't got to be at church to call on him. You ain't got to be at no particular place to call on him, amen. You can be in your car driving down the road. You can be at work. You can be in the grocery store. You can be at, uh, uh, in a shop working on a car. Listen, it, it don't make no difference where you at. You just call upon the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, if you got a broke fingernail, call on him, glory to God. He'll help you get over it, amen. He'll help you get through it. One of the disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said, There's a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fish. 
But what are they among so many? Now he was telling him, he's, he's saying, well, what is five loaves of bread and two fish? What is that among 5,000 people? Amen. What is that among, listen, we do a little food drive here at What the World Needs is Jesus. And we feed uh, uh, maybe a couple families a week. To, uh, 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 we'll, we'll feed two or three families a week, three or four. Amen. And, and we think, wow, we're doing a whole lot. They're, they're, they're fixing to feed 5,000 people here. And they've got two fish and five loaves of bread. Two fish and five loaves of bread. And they didn't even have that. The little boy come up. The lad come up. Now, here he comes strolling up. He's on his way home. He's got fish and bread for supper. He's headed home, glory to God. He's on his way home, and he's, he's walking by here, and he says, man, I've got, I've got just enough for me and uh, my family and some, uh, got some fish and bread. Hey, man, and here they are. They stop him. They say, whoa, wait just a minute here. They tell Jesus, they say, they say we got, uh, this lad's got five loaves of bread and two fish, and, and uh, 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 the disciples say, Lord, help. How's that going to suck? Listen, what would you think? What would you think if you had 5,000 people out in a field and somebody brought you two fish and five loaves of bread and said, now feed the 5,000? What would we think today, amen? We'd think, oh my goodness, we got, we got all this food up here in this uh, uh, thing for the, for the, uh, to feed the hungry with. We've got, we've got triple that and we still don't feed but two or three, four families a week. Amen. We can't feed but three or four families a week, and we've got way more than that. We've got way more than two fish and five loaves of bread, and, he, and he's wanting to feed 5,000. You know what most of us would say? They'd say, Jesus, now you're going to have to come to your senses now because we ain't going to be able to feed. Uh, we're not going to be able to feed uh, uh, 5,000 people. With, now, now, look, Jesus, we're all human here. Let's, let's look at the thing. Let's look at the circumstances here. Let's look at what's going on here. You've got 5,000 people out here in this field, and you've got two fish and five loaves of bread, and you want us to believe that you're fixing to feed all 5,000 of these people. Now, that's exactly what me and you do. Amen? That's exactly what we do. We'd look out in that field and see all them people, and we'd start panicking. We ain't got but a few cents to feed these people with, and Jesus wanting us to feed every one of them. What we going to do, glory to God? What are we going to do? We're going to call on Jesus. That's what we're going to do. We're going to call on Jesus. We're not going to call on nobody else. We ain't going to call on Satan. We ain't going to call on the next door neighbor. We ain't going to call on the pastor. We're going to call on Jesus. Glory to God. That's who we're about to call on. Hey Amen. He said there was a lad here. Now, this little boy doesn't come by. He headed home with his five loaves and, and uh, his two little fish. And he's like, uh-oh. They done caught me now. They fixing to take my fish. Amen. They fixing to take my... That, but he just don't know yet, amen. They fixing to take my fish and my bread. And Jesus answered and said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about 5,000. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, you know what, I, I could just see Jesus when, when he takes the loaves and them fish. And he just lifts them up to the heavenly Father. And he says, here you go, Lord. I'm thanking you that we're going to speak. Listen, this is the way we have to be with our stuff. Lift it up to the Lord and say, I'm thanking you, God, right now. I'm thanking you that you're going to feed these 5,000 people. Amen. Even though with our physical eyes, it, 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 it don't make no sense. It don't look right. And we're, we're, we're going to say, oh, God, how are we going to, what are we going to do? We're in a tide here. How are we going to feed 5,000 people? Listen, we need to do what Jesus done. He lifted it up to heaven. He lifted it up to heaven and he said, he said, Lord, let's just read it. And when he had given thanks, see, he just gave thanks. He distributed, he distributed to the disciples and the disciples took uh, the disciples to them that they were set down and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. Now, I want you to listen to this right here. In other words, he lifted them baskets up and said, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for, for uh, uh, we're, we're going to feed 5,000 people here. And then verse 12 says, And when they were filled, he said unto the disciples, Gather up the fragments. In other words, they was all full. He'd done fed 5,000 people. 5,000 people 
with five loaves of bread and two fish. He said, when they're all full, when they've all got all they want to eat, he said to the disciples, gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Listen, we don't want nobody to be lost here today. We, we can look at that in a spiritual manner and say, look, we don't want nobody to be lost. We want to feed 5,000 people with one video. We want to feed 5,000 people with one, with one preacher. We want to, listen, if we can feed 5,000 people with one preacher, how many preachers are in this world, amen? How many, so we should be able to feed the whole world, amen, with some preaching, amen, with some preaching right out of the Bible, amen, that tells us how to get to heaven, that tells us we have to know Jesus, no other way to heaven, amen, except through Jesus Christ. That's the preaching we need to hear today. Not none of this watered down stuff, not none of this stuff. There's 1,500 different ways to, to get to heaven today. There's not but one way today, and that's through Jesus Christ, glory to God. Praise the Lord. Verse 13, he says, Therefore they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. In other words, in other words, this little boy gave his, this, this young lad here that came, he gave up his two fish and his five loaves. And what did it just say right there? Therefore, they gathered them together and filled 12 baskets. I guarantee you that little boy took them baskets home, glory to God. I believe that lad got them 12 baskets that was left over. Amen. And he went home and fed his family with them. Amen. And they had plenty to eat and they had some left over. They're going to have leftovers tomorrow. Amen. They're going to have some fish leftovers and some bread leftovers tomorrow and the next day and the next day, glory to God. See what that little boy done? He gave up his two fish. He gave up his five loaves. He gave up his two fish. And he got 12 baskets full. Amen. Boy, I tell you what, that excites me, glory to God. 12 baskets. He traded two fish, five loaves for 12 baskets of food. Amen. Glory to God. Who can only know? Who's the only one? And, 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 and to go along with that, he fed 5,000 people. Glory to God. 5,000. Woo! That makes me want to shout, glory to God. 5,000 people. And then he had 12 baskets left over, all out of two fish and five loaves. You know what we'd be saying? Lord, you can't do that. Lord, there ain't no way you're going to be able to feed 5,000 people with two fish and, and five loaves. That's what we'd be saying. Now, that's why we look at it today. We look at it today. We look in these physical eyes and we say, how in the world... Are we going to do this? How in the world are we going to do that? How in the world? Listen, we're looking physically. We're looking with these physical eyes when we need to be looking spiritually, amen. When we need to be looking through Jesus Christ's eyes, amen. Because Jesus said, I'm going away. He said, I'm going to go away, but I'm going to send you a comforter. He said, in the power that I have, you're going to have the same thing, amen. Jesus, listen, he held it up and he said, thank you, Lord. What are we supposed to do? We're supposed to strive to be like Jesus Christ, right? We're supposed to strive to be like the one that walked on this earth without sin. What did he do? He lifted the baskets up to heaven. And he said, thank you, Lord. Thank you, God, for, for, for feeding all of these, giving us enough food to feed every one of these folks. That's what we need to do today, amen? That's where we need to be today. We need to be... We need to be looking up to heaven and say, God, whatever situation you're in, whatever's going on in your life, we need to look up to heaven and say, God, I know you're in charge. I know what is going on with me. It's just a temporary thing down here because I know, glory to God, I know whatever it is that you're going to take care of it. Amen. I know that you're going to lead me in the right way. I know you're going to guide me in that right way. I know you're going to put me in that right situation that's going to help me, glory to God, that's going to get me out of this problem I'm in. All I'm going to do is trust in you. I'm giving it to you. Jesus said, cast your cares on me, so I'm casting. Amen. I'm casting my cares on you, Jesus, and I'm going to leave them right there with you. Amen. You just lead me and guide me in whichever way you want me to go to take care of these problems, these situations. And whenever you do that, whenever you leave it in God's hands, don't pick it back up. Don't take it back out, will you? Glory to God. Leave it there. 
Leave it there. And when God leads you one way, you go that way. When he leads you this way, you go this way. Don't let nobody change you. Don't let nobody talk you out of it. Don't let the devil deceive you because that's his job. That's what he wants to do. That's what he tries to do. Don't let him do it. Amen. You ain't got to listen to the devil and you ain't got to take nothing from him. Glory to God. Because we have Jesus Christ and, and the devil trembles at the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. If you're willing to give up what you have, God will be willing to give you back what you had and more. Amen. I, I want to take you somewhere. I want to take you somewhere. This lad was willing to give up five loaves and two fish, and there was 12 baskets left. I want to take you over here right quick, right quick. We're going to go through this right quick. Book of Job. Book of Job, amen. There was a man in the land of Oz whose name was Job, and that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God. See, there's our trick, that feared God and eschewed evil. And there were born unto him seven sons, three daughters. His substance was... His substance also was 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 ox of yoke, uh, uh, yoke of oxen, 500 she-asses, and a very great household, so that this man was the greatest of all men, uh, of all men of the East. Now, I want to tell you something. This man right here is rich. Amen. This man right here is rich. He's not only rich spiritually. He's not only rich because he knows the Lord and he knows to fear God, but he's rich on earthly things. Amen. He's got a lot of uh, earthly things. See, the Bible says it's, it, uh, uh, it's harder for a rich man to get in into heaven than it is for a camel to go through the eye of a needle, but he says it's not impossible. It might be impossible with man, but it's not impossible with me. See, Job was a rich man, but I believe he still got into heaven. Amen. And, he, and his sons went... Uh, uh, fixed her in their houses uh, every one his day and sent and called for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And it was so whenever the days of their uh, feasting were gone about and that Job sent and sanctified them and rose up early in the morning and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that my sons have sinned and cursed God in their hearts Thus did Job continually. In other words, Job wasn't taking no chances. He wasn't taking no chances. Just in case they had sinned in their heart, just in case they had sinned and not told nobody about it, just in case they had done something. See, Job was taking care of his family. I mean, that's what we got to do today. I mean, that's the way we need to be today. It, not, not only with our personal family, not only with our family family, but with our church family. I mean, they're our family just like our families are. Amen. So we need to take care of our church family just like we do our family. Amen. And we need to be praying for that family just in case, just in case our family has uh, sinned in their heart. Amen. Maybe they've sinned in their heart and done something they shouldn't have done. I'm going to pray for them. I want to pray for them. I want to say, Lord God, I want to say, Lord God, I want you to be with that person. I want you to help that person. And all these things happened to Job. He lost everything he had. He, he lost it all, amen. Everything he had, he lost. But let me show you something. All the, all the riches and all the, all the things that Job had, he lost every bit of it. And then if you go to uh, chapter 42 of Job, and the Lord turned in verse 10, the captive to Job, when he prayed for his friends, also, the Lord gave Job twice as much as he had before. Amen. In other words, when Job turned around and prayed for his friends, see, that's our church family. That's our church family. Our friends are our church family. Amen. If they go to church, they're born again uh, children of God. Amen. That's our family. That's our family. When you become born again, you become part of a huge family. You become part of a great big family. Amen. And you become part of people that's going to pray for you that's going to look after you, that's going to help you, amen? And the Lord gave him back twice as much as he had. And the Lord blessed, uh, the Lord blessed 
the latter end of Job more than his beginning, for he had 14,000 sheep and 6,000 uh, 6, camels and uh, a 1,000 uh, yoke of oxen and a 1,000 she-asses, and he had also seven sons and three daughters. Listen, he lost it all to begin with, everything. He lost everything. But God gave him back. See, see, whenever he followed God, regardless of how he lost it, listen, we want to blame God whenever something bad happens to us. Well, that's God put that on us. God done that. No, sir. No, sir. Listen, whenever we, whenever we get on God's side, whenever we put our life and heart and soul into God's side in, in Jesus, uh, uh, be with Jesus there, listen, it changes everything. See, we change everything. Everything's changed. Job was a man that feared God. Amen. And he lost everything he had. But he still loved God. Amen. He still loved God. He, even though he got sores on him, bulls on him, he couldn't sit down, lay down. He couldn't get up. He couldn't, his feet had him on his feet. He couldn't do nothing, but he still loved God. He still loved God. That's where we're at today, folks. Even in our hardest times, even in our lowest count, even in our times that we don't know what to do and we're, we're, we're starving to death and we're looking for them two fish and five loaves to feed a whole family, amen? Call upon the name of Jesus because, listen, if you'll stay with him, if you'll stay with him and not, and, and, and not give in and not give up, amen, if you give up, he can't help you. If you give up, he can't help you. Stay with Jesus today. Keep Jesus in your heart. Keep him on your mind all the time, glory to God. And if you're lost and undone without him, it's our heart's desire today that you find him some way, somehow. Get a hold of Jesus Christ. Get a hold of him. Don't, don't wait another minute, amen. Because if you lose your life undone without Jesus, that's it. There's no more. That, that's it. That's it. If you, if you die today, that's it. There's no going back and saying, well, I want to serve the Lord now. Nope. Whenever the last breath leaves your body, that's it. You're, you're going where you're going. You're either going to heaven or hell. There's two places you're going to go. And when your last breath leaves your body, you're either going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. He's talking to Christians there. Amen. The rich man Lazarus, the, the uh, Lazarus, they both died. The rich man went into Abra uh, Lazarus went into Abraham's bosom. The rich man was in hell, and the Bible says, the Bible says he he tells uh, Abraham that he wants Lazarus to come down and just dip, just touch his tongue with a little dip of water. Amen. Just touch his tongue. He said, because I'm in so much torments down here. And he didn't say just a torment. He said torments. The Bible's got an S on that. On. Amen. There's more than just one torment down there. There's torments down there. Amen. And he just wanted just a touch of water. Just to, just to cool his tongue. Amen. Listen, it's not a big party down there. I'm here to tell you today, there's not going to be a big party. There's not going to be drinking and partying. When you go to that place, you're going to go unwelcome. Amen. That place wasn't built for you. That place wasn't made for you. Heaven was made for you. Amen. But you can go one of either place, and it's your choice. Not mine, not your mom's, dad's, not your pastor, your preacher, your, your cousin, your uncle. It, it, it's none of them. It's your choice today where you go. Glory be to God. If you have a prayer request today, you can send a private message to facebook.com forward slash what the world needs is Jesus. You can call or text Brother Ricky Phillips, which is me, 256-630-1262. Uh, Brother Larry Miles, 256-603-0641. Brother Kenneth Crane at 256-557-2858. Or Brother Harold O'Neill at 256-475-5854. Hey, man, any of these men would love to talk with you. Listen, we'd love to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ because that's where it's at today, folks. That's where it's at. Listen, if you don't know Jesus today, you need to get a hold of him. You need to get a hold of him, amen. You can also email us at what the world needs is Jesus, TV at gmail.com. Until our next broadcast, may God richly bless you, amen. Now I'm not up on the sea.
a ship was tossing to and fro and breakers dashed on every hand angry winds around the blow all aboard was filled with pride as the mighty billows rolled but then they called up on the one that the winds and waves controlled when he reaches down his hand, no seas at his command. When he waves obey his will, when he says to them be still, what man is this that all decides that the winds and seas obey? Well, he's the one who sails with me, oh yes. He's the master of the sea. Though the storms of life may rage, and the billows round you roll, he can calm a troubled sea, as he did in days of old. As upon the seas we sail, oh, trust in him who never fails. And I'm so glad he sails with me, oh yes, he's the master of the sea. When he reaches down his hands, the low seas at his command. When he waves obey his will, when he says to them be still, what man is this they all to say? That the winds and seas obey. Well, he's the one who sails with me. Oh, yes, he's the master of the sea. Well, I'm so glad he sails with me. Oh, yes, he's the master of the sea. Oh, glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Ooh. 